Is your website accessible? Well, when you see a question like that, the first thing that probably comes to your mind is, I have no idea and why should I care? Well, there are a number of reasons why you should care. The primary reason is you're a business and you want to make sure potential clients can not only find you and your available services on the web, but that all of the content is accessible to everyone, including people with disabilities. The second reason is protecting you and your company from the lawyers out there trying to make a living on what we call shakedowns or quick cash grabs. Okay, you say, well, what does that really mean for me? And what does it have to do with website accessibility? Currently, there is a law firm back east blanketing the real estate industry with demand letters alleging individual Realtor member websites along with company websites are not accessible, thereby violating the Fair Housing Act. This is a novel theory not before alleged in a complaint of this nature. Under this theory, the lawyer sending the demand letter is claiming the Realtors via their websites are denying or limiting services as part of the real estate transaction under the Fair Housing Act. When you typically think of a violation under this specific provision, you think of a customer walking into your office or calling and requesting your services, which you didn't provide to them for whatever reason, ultimately resulting in a violation of the Fair Housing Act. With respect to your website, under the current theory, the claim alleges your website is not accessible to people with disabilities, and therefore you're denying or limiting services to potential buyers and sellers because they can't access the information the same way a person without any disabilities can. There is no case law that deals with the issue of the Fair Housing Act as it applies to website accessibility, which is why this is a novel path for the lawyers to proceed. There is plenty of case law dealing with the ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act, and website accessibility. Over the past several years, courts in various jurisdictions throughout the country have concluded that websites operated by brick and mortar retail establishments are places of public accommodation for purposes of the ADA and the website must therefore be reasonably accessible by those with handicaps, including those that are blind. For example, Domino's Pizza was sued right here in the Ninth Circuit because a blind individual allegedly cannot use the website to order pizza. Literally thousands of ADA lawsuits have been filed against businesses because their websites are claimed to be public accommodations that are insufficiently accessible to the blind and visually impaired. Similar arguments could potentially be made regarding websites run by real estate professionals. Well, the courts have not generally said that all websites must meet the WCAG, Web Content Accessibility Guideline standards, but they have found ADA violations where websites considered to be public accommodations are insufficiently accessible. Many of your peers in Florida and Massachusetts have recently received a demand letter from the Washington DC based law firm, the Portel Law Group, alleging they have violated the Fair Housing Act rather than the ADA and their respective state fair housing laws by having real estate brokerage websites that are allegedly inaccessible to people with disabilities. The Portel Law Group says that it represents a nonprofit named Access for All Inc., whose mission is said to be the promotion of equal access for the disabled. The letter states the recipient's website allegedly failed to function properly when a tester audited the website using screen reader technology. Once the letter is received, representatives from this law group begin calling you incessantly, requesting a settlement conference. They want two things, for you to get your website into compliance and of course, monetary damages. Remember, there are no federal regulations or controlling court decisions under the Fair Housing Act concerning website accessibility for the disabled. If you are the lucky recipient of one of these letters, don't ignore it. While this particular strategy is very distasteful, website accessibility is an issue that needs to be addressed and dealt with regardless of the tactics utilized by the Portel Law Group or any other lawyer, no matter what legal theory is being alleged. You might be curious what the technical issues are with the websites these demands are targeting. 
Individuals who are blind or visually impaired use screen reader technology to access websites and conduct business on the internet. For this to happen, your website must have been designed to function with the most commonly used screen readers or other technology. Images should include equivalent alternative text, alt text as it's referred to, in the markup. If alt text isn't provided for images, the image information is inaccessible for people who cannot see and use a screen reader that reads aloud the information on a page, including the alt text for the visual image. So what about audio files? Just as images aren't available to people who can't see, audio files aren't available to people who can't hear. Providing a text transcript makes the audio information accessible to people who are deaf or hard of hearing, as well as to search engines and other technologies that can't hear. Well, if you haven't completely glazed over by now, you likely just want to know, what should I do to make sure my website is ADA compliant? Well, just ask. The website administrator you or your company have hired will know. Call them right away to determine whether there are important features of your website that the blind or hearing impaired cannot access. And if so, explore the cost of fixing these issues versus any other alternatives that may be open to you or your company. At the absolute minimum, you should make sure your website has an accessibility statement on it. NAR has sample language. OAR has an accessibility statement on our website. An accessibility statement states, we are committed to accessibility for people with disabilities and provides information on who to contact at the organization if there are accessibility issues. On a positive note, this is a national issue, not just specific to a state or two. Because the implications nationally are significant, National Association of Realtors has become involved to support the members. They responded to the demand letter received by your colleagues in Florida and Massachusetts, making it clear the threat is baseless and they will fully support the members defending themselves. So don't panic if you receive a letter, take action and know you're not in this alone. That's all for this month's Legal Brief. I'm Jenny Pakula, CEO for the Oregon Realtors. Thank you for joining us today.